Hello, Tony from New Aqua here. Let me show you how easy it is to install your new tank RO system right under your kitchen sink. This installation guide covers both the pump and no pump reverse osmosis systems with a tank. After unpacking, let's review all the components of your RO system. The first thing that we have lined up here is the upper RO system assembly. This has your carbon polishing filter and your RO membrane filters right on top, and they're all pre-connected. These are fitting connections that we will inspect just to make sure that they're all tight before we proceed. Next up is the three filter housings. You have one carbon filter, one pre-carbon filter, and one sediment filter. One 4.8 gallon water storage tank, one filter housing wrench, four colored hose sections, one tank ball valve, one water feed adapter, one drain saddle, roll of Teflon tape, two filter housing elbows, one TDS meter, one RO membrane that fits into the upper RO system assembly, a high quality faucet with an easy to use on and off valve, and the most important part of all, the leak stop valve. Please note that failure to install the leak stop valve will void the warranty on your RO system. So please install this. It'll save your cabinet and your house from any damage if a leak occurs. Uh, it's a really ingenious little device where right after your water feed adapter, this is in line. So then all of your connections in your whole system are after this. By flipping up this lever, that closes the valve in here. It has this little cartridge that fits inside this tray, like this. It sits lowest in your cabinet, right on the floor. If a leak occurs in anywhere in the system and starts leaking on the floor of your cabinet, this little cartridge will swell up and pop that lever up, which closes the valve. Simple and genius. Let's look at the tools you'll need for the job. You want an adjustable wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, black marker, a razor knife, Phillips screwdriver, and a quarter inch drill bit on a good drill. Let's define what the different stage systems are, starting with the stage five. The stage five is your ground level baseline system, okay? So it has one sediment filter, one pre-carbon filter and one carbon filter. But then you have your RO membrane in here and you have your carbon polishing filter. That is the base system. Next up is stage six with the alkaline filter. So again, it has the same uh, filters as before, the first five, and then the sixth final stage is the alkaline filter. That helps improve you know, mineral content and the taste. Now the next stage six system replaces the alkaline filter with a UV filter. So this is ultraviolet light that uh, kills bacteria and things like that. So if your water has a unique uh, problem with that area, this will help take care of it. So stage six with a UV filter. And finally, we have the seven stage system. This builds upon the foundational five stage system by adding the UV and the alkaline filters as a whole. This comes all assembled. All you have to do is follow the rest of the instructions. So that's the stage seven RO system. Please note that when you order a five, six, or seven stage system, that all of these filters will come pre-attached and assembled on top of the unit. What you will see me do in the rest of this video though, is attaching some of these filters in a couple different configurations, just so uh, you see how the unit functions as a whole, and just to give you a deeper understanding. Let's start with an inspection of the upper RO system. So you can see that we have these pre-configured connections. Really what you wanna do is you want to make sure that they're pushed in all the way. And really, if you take off the clip, just like that, then you can make sure it's pushed in all the way and pull out gently till you get a space there. And we'll replace the clip. Let's do that with each one. Remove the clip, push the tubing in all the way, then replace the blue clip. 
That'll ensure a leak-free installation. Okay, now that we've checked all of the clips, we'll stand it right back up. What we're gonna focus on next is the elbow installation. That's these little elbows here. This step is only for no pump systems. If you have a system with a pump, you may skip this step. There's two of them, one for each side. You'll notice that these have two rubber O-rings for leak proof performance. You'll notice that it says in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our 90 degree elbows and we're going to install it here. Just like that. Turn the whole unit around. It says out on this end. We'll install the other one on the out. Just like that, pointing up. Please note the red color on the connector matches up with this tubing. First, we'll take off the blue clip. We'll push the red tubing all the way down in there. And reinstall the blue clip. Let's go ahead and install our filter housings. First, what we'll do is remove the plastic wrap from all of the filters. And drop it right in. Let's get more familiar with each filter. So this one is a polypropylene filter. If you notice it has it has these notches in the side to catch all the sediments. So things such as sand, silt, rust, sediments, and particles from the water. Water comes in this way and out this way to your system. When I install, I'm very careful to keep it in the same orientation that it was in the packaging. So if you take the plastic off and this is up, I always place it in here the same direction. Before installing the housing, double check the O-ring is seated properly and has no visible damage. You'll notice that the O-rings are coated with a food grade lubricant. Please don't clean this off You'll want to leave it on so you get a tight seal. Once you've determined that your O-rings are good to go, complete the install. The sediment filter starts on the right side. And it screws on. Next up is the pre-carbon filter. Let's look at the pre-carbon filter a lot closer. As you can see, the ends on here are very different. It has these vents on the inside, and this bottom is totally different than the top. So it's very important to make sure it's in the filter housing the proper way, otherwise water will not flow through it. But that is the pre-carbon filter. in the middle position and finally the carbon filter you'll notice that the carbon filter is like a screen material so water goes inside and then out the center to flow through the rest of the system the bottom and the top look very much the same but it's still very important to stick to how the label is oriented to be placed into the holder. Make sure that the silicone O-rings are on the top and the bottom. This is where I like to take the wrench and snug each one up.
If you've purchased the Stage 6 system, let's go ahead and install the alkaline filter now. What this does is it increases alkalinity through remineralization, providing healthy mineral balance and great tasting water. So what it does is it snaps on top of the Stage 5 carbon polishing filter, just like that. Then the water line that normally connects to your faucet would just connect to this in series. First we'll cut the tubing. What you want to do is you want to get a sharp blade and you want to put it across the tubing. And I like to use an old board to cut on. And I'll go across the tubing and I'll push with the tip using a downward stroke to cut through it and then cut the remaining part off. See how nice and square that is? That way it will fit into the quick connect fitting and not leak. So once that's installed, you would connect this end to your faucet. For those of you who have purchased the seven stage UV filter, let's go ahead with that installation. The mounting clips. Position it right on top of your carbon polishing filter. Now that the filter housing is installed, let's look at the remaining parts. So there's this glass tube that the bulb fits into. So it kind of looks like a, you know, a lab tube. This keeps the water outside of the bulb. Okay, so it's closed off there. So we have that. Then we have our bulb. We have our end cap and a silicone o-ring. Let's go ahead and place the closed end of the glass tube inside the filter housing. Now in the center of the filter housing on this end is a spring. What that does is that holds the tube level and in place. Next, let's place the silicone o-ring over the glass tube. What this does is prevent water from leaking out the end of the housing. Next, we'll take the metal cap, place it over the tube, and tighten it by hand. It's important for a leak-free tight fit that you feel the end of the glass tube here. That should make it secure. To keep the oils of your skin off of the glass, use a pair of mechanical gloves or latex gloves. What happens is the oils on your skin get on the glass. When the glass is in operation, it develops a hot spot that could weaken the glass and therefore shorten the life of your bulb. So gloves are highly recommended. Next, let's connect the light bulb to the ballast. You can see that it's not a perfect square, so you can match it up, plug it in. Now let's place the bulb inside of the housing. Double check one more time for a snug fit. This white wire with the small clip into the side. Let's go ahead and connect the water line. Don't forget blue clips. Let's take a second and talk about, this is the feed water adapter where your water comes in right on your cold line. The great thing about it is it will fit a half inch or a three eighths fitting. What you do is if you have the larger size, go there, take this and put it right on top. And now you can make this go between quite easily. Let's install the feed water adapter. First, we'll turn the valve off. We're focusing on the cold side I tend to turn both off though because we're messing with all the water lines. 
After closing the cold water valve, remember to open the faucet to let any remaining water come out. Otherwise, when you disconnect the hoses, water will spray everywhere. What we'll do is we'll take this hose off and we're gonna put the feed water adapter in line between them. I have the 3 8 connection here. Always look in your fittings and make sure that the O-rings are in place. Just snug, don't over tighten. Next up is installing our drain saddle. So this clamps on each side of the pipe and allows it to drain out properly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it here. You want it before the trap system, okay? You don't want it after that. If you have a sink that's a double bowl sink and you have another horizontal pipe here, you could drill the hole in the top of that and that would work out fine. Otherwise, it goes right on the side here. It's gonna be a perfect fit. Take our black marker and I'm gonna mark a hole around the side here with our quarter inch drill bit around the side here. Comes with this foam gasket that has adhesive on one side. So what we'll do is we'll peel that off and place it right over the hole. And make sure you get exactly over it so that you can aim your saddle on there properly. To make sure you line it up, I would take another drill bit. Be careful not to damage the fitting, but you're just poking it through like that. It's pretty loose. I would put it in the hole, see it in there like that. That'll help you line it up. And you can take the other side, line like that. Put your bolt through there. One thing to notice is the saddle on this side has a space for the nut to fit into so that it doesn't turn. That way all you need is a Phillips screwdriver to tighten it. Once you have the nuts threaded onto the screws, once it's kind of snug, take your drill bit, put it in there and make sure your hole is lined up. Otherwise your drain will be off. That looks good there. Be careful not to move it. Keep snugging it down. I like to go back and forth until the sides are clamped all the way shut. Getting close. You can see a gap closing up here. All right, now it won't budge at all. Should be good to go. Next up, let's install the faucet. We're going to use the fourth hole to the right. There's one, two, three, four, and our stainless steel sink. If your installation requires drilling, locate the spot on your countertop where you would like the faucet and make sure that it hangs over the sink appropriately. The countertop we are installing on today is quartz, but keep in mind that these methods apply to granite or any other stone countertop that is prone to cracking. If you are drilling through quartz or granite, you will need to use clay to make a pool of water for drilling as so. When drilling into quartz or granite, you have to use a 5 8 diamond tipped hole saw drill bit like we're using. When drilling into wood, laminate, or other non-stone countertops, drill a pilot hole using a quarter inch drill. Then switch to a 5 8 drill bit to finish the job. Here's the faucet hardware. You're going to put this washer on first, and the rubber one, the metal one, the spring one, and then the nut. What I like to do is stack all of them up so you can put them on at the same time. Like that. Let's install the tank ball valve right on the top. So what I'm gonna do is use some Teflon tape 
and I like to go clockwise and stretch it a little bit about one so that's two three times around make sure you don't get any of the pieces down in there nice and clean yeah very important you have a, the hole very clean next we'll put our ball valve right on top Make sure not to cross thread anything, and it goes on real easy. All the way down till it's snug. Like most fittings in plumbing, if your valve handle is in line with the fitting, water will flow. If it's crossways, water will stop. Let's go ahead and place the RO system right in the cabinet. Then our tank. Let's install our leak stop valve. Remember, if the paddle is up, that means it's shut. That no water can flow through it. I like to place the leak stop valve below the feed water adapter. That way, you can have a really short hose as your first connection. This one has just a couple holes to secure it to the floor. Let's start making system connections. You'll notice that the tubing comes in blue, yellow, red, and black. Let's focus on the incoming water. We're gonna to go to the first stage filter with red tubing. So remember to take off the blue clip. Push the red tubing all the way up in to the fitting. Replace the blue clip. As you can see, we have the pump system in here. So let's go ahead and connect that water line. So it goes right into here. Remember your blue clips. That's what keeps everything from leaking. If your hoses are pushed in all of the way. So that's your inlet water. So our destination is to back here. What I like to do is put the hose to the back. the filters to keep it out of the way and give plenty extra push it in the back fitting all the way down until it stops take your blue clip place it underneath the fitting take the remainder of our red tubing push it into the in portion of our stop leak valve and go right to the feed water adapter. Blue clip. Since this faucet needs a compression fitting, I'm going to make a tail out of a piece of tubing to attach to the faucet, then we'll attach to our quick connect. Let me show you how to put it together. Put that out of the way. You need this little tube first. Put right in the end. Okay. Then this goes on like that. And then this collar. Just like that. Next, we'll take that fitting and we'll put it right in the bottom of the threaded shaft and tighten it up. Let's connect our quick connect fitting to our faucet. Push it all the way in. Our blue clip on. That'll hold it snug, secure, and leak free. You have the five stage system. What you do is you go off the carbon polishing filter right here to the end of your faucet. Cut a piece of blue tube, place in here all the way. Connect 
the other end to your quick connect. Remember your blue clips. Nice and snug. To connect the faucet to your six stage alkaline filter, use this fitting. When connecting your faucet to the seven stage UV filter, you connect it directly to the flow rate sensor. Find a secure location above filter unit to mount your power supply. Once the UV power supply is mounted, it's time to plug it in. Let's focus on our tank connections. That's gonna be this yellow connector on this carbon polishing filter. For this connection, I'm gonna use pretty much the full length of yellow tubing from this fitting to the tank over here. Pull the blue clip off the fitting, the yellow tube, all the way in. Make sure that's seated in there all the way. It was kind of wanting to sit on the outer edge there. So uh, to keep it out of the way, I'm going to push it down, push it down in here like this and run it around the back side of all the other hoses. Like that. With this fitting, you unscrew this part, place your yellow tube through it this direction. So it's like that. Put that all the way in to the valve. Slide that over and finger tighten. It'll expand the inside in there and make a snug fit. So you'll locate the drain flow restrictor. That's where the black tubing goes into for the drain. Pull the clip off. Push our black tubing in there. All the way. Put our blue clip on. Make sure it's seated underneath that collar. Sometimes they wanna go on the outside of it. Mount this right in our drain saddle. All the way in. Very important. And our blue clip. Make sure it's seated well. Let's install the RO membrane. Very good. Make sure that goes in all the way. It's kind of stuck on me and didn't really want to seat in there properly. Make sure everything's snug. The fittings are all tight. Get back where you need it. Now that we have everything installed, let's inspect each connection. It's very important to go through and make sure that each connection is pushed in and secure and you have all your clips on, every single connection. So I'll look at every hose. Even in your saddle, tank, just do a visual inspection. Make sure you've used the wrench to tighten every single filter housing, just so there's no leaks at the top here. Now, whether you have the pump system or the non-pump system, first time startup is essentially the same. The pump really just assists in filling up the pressure in the tank. For my system, I'm a little low on water pressure, so I'm opting to use the pump system.
Next thing I do is make sure that each valve is closed. So if it's in line, if it's in line with the valve, that means it's water is flowing. When it crosses it, it's not flowing. So water on, water off. Same with this one, water off, water on, okay? Step number one of system startup is to make sure that the ball tank valve is closed. All right, now that we've checked all the connections on every tubing, every connector, every part of the system, we'll go ahead and turn on our faucet. And we're gonna observe for leaks in the fittings that we've you know, reconnected. Because right now, water can only go this direction. Next, let's check our leak stop valve. You'll notice that the paddle is up. That means no water can flow through it. Okay, so that's how we want it. We'll focus on the feed water valve and we'll turn it on. We're watching for any leaks right here and here. So far, everything looks really good. Let's go ahead and place the cartridge in our leak stop valve. You see water. Oh, leaking right there. Yep, there we go. We have our first leak leaking right out this fitting. So we'll turn that off, clean up our mess, and troubleshoot what the problem is. Most likely, the tubing wasn't placed all the way up in there. Should be good to go. Place the blue clip. Going to go ahead and try this again. No leak. Filling up the system. We're just going to keep paying attention to the water filling the system up. You saw how water was spraying right out of that. I was able to fix it right away. I'm watching all the rest of the fittings, making sure none of them are leaking like that was leaking. So far, so good. After a minute or so of letting the system fill up with water, you can go ahead and plug in the pump. We're just watching the whole system. Everything looks good so far. With the tank shut off and the system filled with water, let's turn on the faucet just to run out any particulates before we open the tank. Now go ahead and turn on the ball valve to fill up the tank. All right, so the tank is full. That took about two hours fill time. In my situation, the water pressure is a little low. So I'm using the pump system. If you have really good water pressure, it'll take about two hours for your tank fill time also. What we're gonna do now is drain the tank to get rid of any particulates or anything in the system. We're just gonna get it totally flushed out. So what I'm gonna do is turn the feed water valve off. I've unplugged the pump. And then what we're gonna do is just turn on the faucet and it'll drain the tank in about five minutes. So far, the water looks pretty clear, so there's not a lot of uh, particulates in there from the filters, but sometimes you'll have little black um, particulates and that's normal, that's okay. But so far, so good. You can see how the stream is not as strong as it used to be, so we're getting near to the end of the tank. So down to a thin stream. That's what it looks like when the tank is empty. Okay, so let's fill the tank again so by turning the valve on and plug in the system in. Hear the motor come to life. And this is a good time to check for any leaks in your cabinet on your system. Everything looks really good. Congratulations on the installation of your new Aqua Tank RO system. 
But now what I suggest you do is go in and three or four times, drain the tank, refill the tank, drain the tank, refill the tank. This will help get any of the particulates out of the system, make sure everything is clean and running, the water tastes good. Uh, there are times where water could be milky for a little bit of time. That's just air bubbles in there and that'll dissipate over time also. And then over the next couple of weeks, keep checking for leaks like twice a day, look under the cabinet, make sure everything's good that you don't notice anything dripping or leaking because usually it's just a hose or something that you have to push up in there. Um, but just check the whole system over. So from all of us at New Aqua, thank you.